Hey, what's going on, guys? We got a special guest today. We have Roger, aka the Deli guy. You guys might have seen him on TikTok. He runs one of the most profound delis in my hometown of Ridgewood, New Jersey, Parkwood Deli. Roger, how are we doing today? Hey, Jordan, how are you today? Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, we're excited to have you on the Clocked In podcast. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is, first of all, where did your journey start? Because this isn't just, hey, I ended up being the deli guy by accident. But And when I say the deli guy, guys, I mean, type it on the internet, the deli guy, and he comes up. He's the guy. So where did your journey start with uh, restaurant ownership, uh, different managing, and all, all that? Yep. Uh, Jordan, when I was 21, I was a chef, and um, I went and looked at a place in White Corp, New Jersey. It was country to me because I live close to the Lincoln Tunnel. You know from Ridgewood, so you know how far that is maybe half hour, 40 minutes away. And uh, just my, my chef couldn't afford the deli. I bought it when I was 21 and there my deli career started. I was in Boulder Run Shopping Center called Boulder Run Deli for 11 years. Owned the restaurant for two years in Midland Park, New Jersey. And I bought the location I'm in now and I'm here 27 years, which is called Parkwood Deli. So I'm on like a, uh, I'm 56, we're on like a 36 year run right now. Holy smokes, that's incredible. And why is it named Parkwood? Well, Parkwood, because the building is in Midland Park and Ridgewood. So I took the park from Midland Park and the wood from Ridgewood. So it's Parkwood Deli. I love it. And if anyone knows any of the, out the North Jersey battles is because it, it's a huge sandwich off there. So part of the battle is uh, when I was growing up, it was West Side, East Side. So the East yep. Side guys were always Wilkes. The West Side people were always Parkwood. And it always became this big debate. So when you guys started this Parkwood Deli, was there any, was any of this around like this debate well, or where? When, when I was Parkwood Deli, when I first started, you know, um, just trying a new location, build myself up. And yes, there was a lot of talk about Wilkes and Spring Street Deli, you know, by Spring Street, uh, Spring Street moved out. Wilkes, you know, as we moved on, they realized, you know, that who I was, what I was. And that's that kind of conversation ended pretty quick. <laughs> i and, love and, it and hence the number one deli guy you know yeah it doesn't just happen by mistake and how did you for you how did your parkwood what would you see it as did you see it as an opportunity like what's kept you there so long honestly um jordan the truth of the fact is my dad was a vice president of a tv corporation in new york city and he was getting pushed out so i said you know what let's just buy this location we'll make it like a 7-eleven and we both could have an extra income my dad, uh, God bless his soul, passed away at a young age in that, in that time. And my mom was here by herself. So I'm like, you know what? I got rid of my stock in my restaurant. I came here and uh, we, we explored this to make uh, my family, my mom's, for me to help my mom out and my family prosper as we are today. Oh, man, I got chills from that. I, I love that you, and, and what does the family dynamic mean to you? So my, my, my family's everything. Uh, my mom... My mom and dad were with me from the beginning. My dad gave me the money to open my first store. 21 year old, obviously couldn't get no money from a bank or nothing. So my dad supported me there. And my mom to this day, she's 80 years old. She handles all my financing. Nobody touches my money but my mom. <laughs> so now I think back 32 years. So mom was in her forties when she started counting my money and now she's in her eighties and she's still counting. Oh yeah, my so God, awesome. that's incredible. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I have that's an account and I shared this with you off the record. As far as social media and computer goes, my account always wants me to get, uh, you know, online banking and stuff. And I'm the last guy that we, we're going nowhere near that still because my mom is 80 and she can't turn a computer on. Neither can I. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're blue collar as they come here in my deli. But um, I surround myself with great people. My son is, uh, you know, totally into in social media. My partner, uh, Heather, who works with me here, she's everything about, you know, getting it out, get me online and share me with uh get me online to talk in a conversation like this yeah absolutely so first off where did this whole deli guy come from what 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 is this for the people that don't know about it well i kind of don't have an ego i just see all my videos but uh as a, a easy way to put it all my buddies and everything you know i would just say number one deli guy number one deli guy number one deli guy then um what year were you saying that Probably when I came here, probably about, you know, I'm pretty kind of confident. Let's use that word. So I would just say, you know, it's the number one deli guy, you know, 
uh, you know, what's your name? Hey, it's the number one deli guy. And my friends would be like, just say Roger. You know, and I'm like, nope, it's the number one deli guy. And I just kept pounding it and pounding it. And then um, I got lucky. You know, my son came up with this social media idea. And I was like, nope, don't want nothing to do with it. He's like, nah, let's just do something on TikTok. And I said, uh, my son is just as a freshman in college at Tampa. Hence where yeah, he University of Tampa. Uh, yeah. Right before he left, he said, let's put something on TikTok. And I'm like, nah. And um, if you want me to get into that, I can right away. Um, and I was like, nope. He said, I said, Ty, we live a good life. We don't need any problems. Social media. Nope. Let's do it. That just do a sandwich. So I made a sandwich. Um, didn't know nothing about numbers. We hit 300,000 on our first sandwich. And my son's like, dad, you know, you hit 300,000 views or whatever it's called likes. And I'm like, Ty, it does nothing for me. So he's making another one. So I made another one. It was 850,000 hits. So I'm like, dad, you're not even looking at me. You, you, you think that's nothing. I'm like, Ty, it doesn't mean anything to me. He goes, Dad, you're crazy. This is stupid numbers. And I'm like, nope. So he said, Dad, everybody's, and he would answer people. You know, they would talk about my sandwich and he would answer them very kindly. And they kept asking for a chicken parm. So we made chicken parm with Broccoli Rob and we got 3.8 million hits. I think it's over that now. <laughs> you know, store started going crazy. People coming from all over and hence the word, you know, and number one deli guy just, just kept going. The deli guy, the deli guy, the deli guy. So you, so you were doing this number one deli before there was TikTok, yeah. before there was any social media. You just proclaimed it. Yeah, Jordan, I think that if you believe in anything you do, in anything you do, if you believe that you are good and you are great or you are the best, then you got to, if you prove it every day, that you can do it and you can be whatever you want to be. And I believe that I am. I believe that me, my staff, you know, my right-hand guy, Eddie, just – the girl that just put me on the contact you, Heather, you know, the girls that work the counter, the pizza guys, I believe that, you know, I am, I call it the, uh, you know, the quarterback, but you know, we are, we, we crush it here. You know, if you, if I turn this camera around, you've seen my store right now. I mean, we are just, we are puking Christmas right now. Like we at the day after Thanksgiving and we're aggressive on, you know, baskets and cookie platters and catering and everything where it's just, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to know that, you know, a guy from North Bergen went a college education that came to Wyckoff, New Jersey, Bergen County. So you went from Hudson County by the Lincoln Tunnel. And anybody that's listening, Jordan, you can share. That's pretty far, 35, 40 minutes away. So you went from yeah. the city to almost country where we are, you and I are from, because there's a lot of green up here. That's, you know, it's, I, I find it to be pretty awesome, you know, that, you know, a lot of people don't think you're going to be successful in life. And 30 something years later, I'm still standing here, you know. And, uh, and, yeah. and, very, and very prosperous and, and pushing out some, some good stuff, you know? Yeah. And I just want to make note of that, that Parkwood Deli is one of the most known things about Ridgewood. Like my girlfriend's from St. Pete and St. St. Petersburg, Florida. She's never been to Jersey before when we went and we've gone three, four or five times. And each time we go, one time we just went to Parkwood. It was closed. We're like, we'll grab lunch. It is what it is. And she had this sandwich, and she goes, oh, my God, Jordan. This Jordan, is look the at this, best. Jordan. This is called pizza, baby. Friday night at Parkwood. There's nobody better Great. than us. <laughs> That's called dough. I, I love it. it. I love that it. That guy's calling right around me, Jordan. That, that bad boy is probably about 75 pounds of dough going out tonight. <laughs> pizza. Friday night at Parkwood, baby. There's nobody better. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. But like I was saying, my girlfriend ends up coming. She doesn't know you guys at all. And she goes, Jordan when are we going to Parkwood? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And when we got there, that's when I saw you, Roger, and I was telling you the whole story. And it was just mind blowing the reach that this has because everyone is enamored of it. Everyone's excited about it. And you're constantly on top of it. You're bringing you're the energy. Yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty, you know, we're pretty aggressive. We, we try and be, you know, in the community kind as we can. And as you see, tends the shirt you got on. We give everybody a T-shirt when they come in the store and make knowledge of me, the number one deli guy. You know, um, I gave, I believe I gave you and your girlfriend one and wear it proud. You know, it's, it's awesome. It's just something that we like to do. Ever since we crushed on TikTok, I said, you know what? I'm going to give everybody that acknowledges something about or, hey, are you the deli guy or whatever wants to take a picture of me or an autograph? I give them the T-shirt and I'm, I'm ha and people are like, you're crazy. I'm like, that's what I want to do. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud that you're in Florida sitting there with my deli shirt on. My son <laughs> is part of Sigma Chi. Every one of the guys in Sigma Chi, shout out to them. They all got a T-shirt and you're an alumni there and you got one, you know, so it's pretty yeah. cool. 
yeah cool. and that's where that's where the story all kind of happened is that like i knew about parkwood and i saw my buddies who are a little bit younger they're posting about this the entire yeah. time and i go like i knew where the kid was who was posting and i'm like dude you're not from ridgewood you're not from midland park you're not from glen rock like where are you getting this from and he goes oh the owner's son is there and i'm like <laughs> oh my god this is incredible yeah. Yeah. So, so where where did this culture come from that you build? Because it's very unique to your restaurant. Like you're getting excited about pizza, you're getting excited about sandwiches. You're keeping everyone at the the top of it, and you, you build know, this family think, dynamic when you get in there. Yeah, I just you know people say to me like you know when I with the TikToks and the energy like you say to me, I'm making the same sandwich as any joe but i bring it you know i bring the enthusiasm i bring the excitement you know we have fun in the store with people you know you've seen the guy just passing with the dog he he's an employee of mine but we're you know tonight's a friday night it's it's showtime for us tonight's gonna be cranked up in here a lot of a lot of business and you know you know i call it you know showing up to the show that's my line you know we show up to the show every day and i'm behind the counter i'm on stage and broadway's in front of me and the, and the people that come in my store is Broadway and I'm the show behind the counter, you know, and we have a good time. We crank it up. Michael Jackson comes on. We'll do a little dance or whatever behind the counter. We just have fun. You know, it's just, you know, if you do anything in life, you have to enjoy and love what you do or else don't do it. So people will say, I hate my job. Then you know what? Get another job, you know, go get it. You know, don't, don't go to work every day and moan about it. Change it, you know, change the decision because one day it's going to be over. You know, we lost a very good friend of mine last week. He dropped, dropped of a heart attack at 59. An icon in our town, Mr. Drew Gibbs, God bless his soul. And it, it enlights everybody that's out there, including myself, that I work 150 hours a week, no problem. And I push it. You got to enjoy. You got to smell the roses, you know, because you never know. And, and I'm very fortunate, Jordan, you know, like I say to you, I live in Wyckoff, Bergen County, very, very beautiful area. No education, no nothing. You know what I tell people that tell me? Work hard work hard if if eight o'clock in the morning doesn't get it done get up at seven o'clock in the morning if that doesn't get it done get up at six o'clock in the morning figure out what works for you but you know i don't know the drive for me every day is not to let my family down and just to prove everybody wrong that always say that you know you can't get it done without a college education or you can't get it done without knowing how to email somebody well you know what i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna strangle you and drown you in my work ethic that's my motto you know and 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 it's awesome you know i just love it i love when somebody comes and says, oh, you can't, or I don't think you can get that done, or you, you know, okay, thank you very much for the challenge. You just fed me some more steak that I'm going to grind at, you know? Yeah, and I, and I love that you're doing this, Roger, because what's going on in society right now, and I'm not, we're not talking about that, but a lot of people are viewing, hey, you can't, self-doubt. It kind of hits on everyone, and it sits on them, and they think, oh, that random guy's opinion actually matters, when it doesn't. Right. But you're using it as fuel to to for your rocket ship, rocket yeah. ship, which we call Parkwood, um, yeah. to take it to the ash, like take it to the take it to the moon. You know yeah. what I mean? That anybody is, when anybody gets negative with me, Jordan, and stuff like that. One, I don't want you in my life. I don't need to party with you or hang out with you. But two, I just look at him and say, you know what? Maybe don't go out and play golf twice a week. You know, if you can't afford that steak, don't go out and have it. You know, figure it out. You know, but. You know, I think, you know, you realize that you're a lot younger than me, but there's a lot of opportunity there for everybody. And, and I'm very humble that, you know, my son decided to go to social media for me and it is stupid, stupidly exploded. And I don't know if you can see on the screen, but behind me, there's a backdrop for Christmas, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. but on, underneath this, I can't take it down now. There's hundreds and hundreds of signatures that people came from all over that it was, uh, well, where are you from? Chicago. Oh, and they would sign the wall back here. You know, Chicago, really? my name is John Doe from Chicago, Great Delhi. So back here for the last three or four months, there's hundreds of you know signatures back there from people just coming in to see the Delhi guy. You know, it's 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 very humbling, very, very awesome. You well, know? what, um, where, how long, how long have you been doing this? So my son started right before he went to college, I would say. So probably we're in this probably eight months now, give or take, you know, seven, eight months, um, front page of the Bergen record, never been there before. I've done so many charitable things, never been the front page of record. 201 magazine is a big magazine. I'm sure you know what that is. Yeah. Uh, it, it exploits every restaurant, every awesome thing in the area. Never can get in there in the 201 magazine, channel four interview, channel 12. So all through my life, I've done many, many kind things and I never got silly exposure like this. And now sandwiches on TikTok has got me fame. 
you know? Yeah. And I, I, I bring this up and I keep asking about it. The reason is because this is possible for anyone. Like Roger had an incredible career and he's been calling himself the deli guy for years and years and years and years. This place is where I used to go in eighth grade. And it was, I remember there was, I think during my middle school and high school years, every time I went there, I saw someone I knew. And it wasn't like I saw Roger. It was like, I saw another kid in class and it's like, everyone would go here. It was just, it was just a spot. But at that point, Roger was, famous in the Ridgewood Midland Park area in our 201 area now with social media and the utilization of it and it's not saying that Roger even uses social media because he doesn't (laughs) told you he can't do an email his son's doing he brought around the team and I bring that up because with the right team you can build that exposure and were you ever trying to sell people to come to Parkwood like my whole point like what was the approach it wasn't sell 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 it was just provide entertainment and value. What well, would, would you agree or disagree? Yeah, I just did it. Like I said, I just did it off the cuff, made a couple sandwiches. And my son would tell me, you know, you know, we have a, a, a local pizzeria that has a very, very famous and why not, you know, a lot of delivery guys and everything. He goes, dad, he has 85 people. You have 850,000. Do you see that? You know, it's crazy what you're doing. Cause I wouldn't see the value in the numbers. You know, I would say like, Ty, who cares? Leave me alone. I'm eating dinner. And then you're like, dad, Stop saying that, you know, like we just did a, you know, we called it the Bronx bomber in the store the other day. And every time I think it's peaks and valleys, we did just, it's a sandwich. Uh, it's just one that we have here at the deli. So I made the Bronx bomber. My son videoed it. It's at like 500,000 views or something like, so every time I think like, is the run going to end? It's, it's crazy. It's, it's just crazy, you know? So keep, keep yeah. as long as I bring the energy and, you know, we have a good imagination and you do kind things. I think good things always come to you, you know? So, yeah, so let's dive into that. So where does this energy come from? What what time are you getting to work at? So I get to work every day at 4.30 in the morning at least. And I'm out cold in my bed by 8 p.m. at night. I'm shot, you know. But, you know, I, we have a lot of employees. And, I, you know, my motto is just trying to keep everybody upbeat. And, you know, just I just push from the time I come in. You know, I'll go to the gym every day like at uh, 9.15 for about an hour, you know, just to get out of here, clear my mind, just try and stay young and stay fit. And I come back and I push it till the time I come home. And usually I try and stay at least 5, 5.30 every day. Like tonight is, you know, we call it showtime night. It's a big night. It's Friday night. You know, everybody takes takeout and stuff. So tonight I'll be here extra late, but it's okay. You know, it's, it's good stuff. It's what you enjoy doing. Yeah, it's, you know, you got to, like I go back to what I said before, you got to, you, if you count your hours, oh, I worked five hours today, and you, and you stop moaning like that in life, where are you going to go? You know, don't. You know, and I'm sure people out there have a lot of problems with that. But if you like what you do, it doesn't matter how many hours you work in that day. You follow? I never count my hours. You know what I mean? If the work is here and people want to see me or something needs to get done, I know it's my business. People say, oh, it's gross business. Look how much money he's making and stuff like that. Well, it's not easy. You know, I'm selling sandwiches for $8. It's not like I'm selling, <laughs> you know, stock here for, you know, $1,000 a share. So how many sandwiches and how much grinding do you have to do? You know, so, but it's, it's, and- it's, it's awesome. Yeah, and just just to bring that up a little bit, how has uh, has COVID been a factor at all? Just because I ask this question, just because when I have restaurant owners or different people come on, I'm always like, "What's changed with that?" Like, obviously, you guys hopped into TikTok, you guys did the social media aspect, you did a couple different things, which pushed you way ahead, yeah. um, and it so gave you that opportunity during COVID. One of the first days of COVID, um, an email came out that Valley Hospital was looking for some don some donations you know facebook you know instagram yeah. seen, uh, you know in the morning coming early we check the emails the, the young lady that i told you about she'll say okay let me go over your email she'll read them to me we'll attack the ones we have to if we have to be aggressive we're aggressive and this one said the valley hospital was looking for meals so i automatically jumped in and we donated 100 meals from that monday to friday to valley hospital work oh wow over. so they, all I asked them back was a picture from them, you know, of, you know, thank you, Parkwood Deli. So I put it on my platform just to show people that we needed to take care of those people. And that exploded. So during COVID, I was doing the average hundreds and hundreds of box lunches to the local hospitals. And people were donating them to people that their loved ones that were in the hospital. So if they couldn't get in to see people, they, they, they oh, we've seen you on social media. Can you send food to this person? And I would say, like, absolutely. What hospital? blah, blah, blah. And they would, they would physically donate the money. We'd have physical donations from people or Parkwood Deli would donate them. 
And so COVID just, you know, we didn't shut down. We stayed healthy through the whole thing. Thank God. Some of my employees that their parents didn't want them to work, just didn't come to work. And that was fine. And, you know, we leaned on family a lot and we pushed through, you know, and it was COVID as much as a lot of people, uh, it hurt the walking crowd 100%. But as far as me pushing out curbside and dealing uh, social media through the hospital and stuff like that was, 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 you know, it was okay for us. Yeah. And it's even more fulfilling when you get into a service space where it's, Hey, we're all on this mission together and we're pushing towards. So I applaud you for being first week in when no one knows what's going on. People, everyone's talking crazy and you're like, no, we got to take action. Yeah. What I think happened with, with uh, COVID, I think it goes back to, um, I'll use the comment that I use a lot, the American way where people are like, oh yeah, this COVID thing is going to end in a week. You know, I'll, I'll close my restaurant. I'll take a week's vacation and I'll listen to everybody and, you know, I'll shut down and I'll stay healthy. Well, it'll turn into week one, week two, week three. Now everybody's saying, holy cow, look what Park with Deli's doing. They're open. They got to line out the door to do curbside. And in week four, week five, and all these restaurants started saying, man, we're going to either go out of business or we better figure it out. You know, I didn't yeah. figure it out. I didn't close my tent and say, I'm going to sleep home in bed and, you know, hope I don't get COVID. And, well, you know what? When there's a down, I'm more aggressive. So everybody that was retreating and getting down on things, we're more aggressive. You follow? So if you don't want it, I want it. You want to get in the game, I want in the game. So you that's what I go back to talking about fuel. You just fueled me even more. You don't want you want to close your rest and thank you. I'll take your business from you. You know, you you, yeah. you, you think it's I, easy I, to stay home and sleep in the house and worry about COVID? Great, stay home. I'll be open. You know what I mean? And, it, and it's, I, I really it, like it, like you can hear my voice. It just jacks me up even more. You know, you, if you I, I, I have friends, I have friends that own restaurants and I'm like, open up your restaurant, do to go. Well, I'm a sit down restaurant. I don't care. Do to go. And they look at me like, well, I really can't. I'm like, what do you mean? You can figure it out, you know, figure it yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Roger. That, that right there is the reason I really wanted you to come on because that perspective of, we will not take no for an answer and we will figure it out yep. is what the people need to hear. And that's what it takes to be successful. And I love that, that downturn portion that is true with real estate. That is true with stocks. That is true with any opportunity. Whenever there's times of uncertainty, you jump at that. Look at you. There is no one else offering lunch. You go, am I oblivious? <laughs> like, am I making a mistake? No, I'm going pedal to the metal. Like the whole job is to sell sandwiches. Yeah. And now there's no competition. Let's go. Yeah. So like, you know, COVID would need you to lock the front door, tell my employees to stay home. So now I got to worry if their family's making a salary or their family's eating, you know, it's my responsibility. One for my family. You know, what do I do with my family, my mortgage, my car payment, you know, you, 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 the bottom line in America is you got to work and it's out there for you. So you can sell sandwiches. You can roll marbles. You can be a stock guy. You can be whatever you want to be. But if you work hard, Jordan, if you work hard, and I do believe this, and it's, I'm 36 years into what I do for a living, you're going to make, you're going to do fine. And, 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 you know, so send your wife out to work if you don't make ends meet. That's so you both have to work. Just figure it out, you know, but there's a, there's a way. I mean, I, I look at, I love people when they say, oh yeah, I lost my job. I made 150,000. My next job offered me a hundred thousand. I'm not taking that. That's an insult. Well, how about take the hundred thousand dollar job and you know what? Just keep the ball rolling. Don't get in debt and get back to the 150. No, you know what they do, Jordan, where we're from. They, they say, ah, I'm too good. I live in, you know, I live in Burke County. <laughs> that guy offered me 90,000. I made 160, but bonuses. Well, maybe that job ain't out there anymore. You know, Jordan, and you got to start again all over, but you know, and I look at people, I'm like, take the 90, take the benefits and figure it out, you know, just but, keep but no, it's true. Just keep working. Cause that, that lapse time is so, it, it yeah. can, it, cause it's not even the ripple of, Hey, it's the 70 grand or whatever it is. It's the ripple on your mindset, which is even worse. Cause yeah, then, then you get content with just chilling. You get lazy at home. You start accumulating bills, you know, and then it, who, who wants to do that? You know, just, just, Whatever it may be. And I know there's a lot of different stories out there. Everybody has their own story and I get it. I don't want to think I'm the savior. I absolutely not. I'm not coming across like that. The question is, if you can be, if you can get out of your house every day, there's opportunities out there for you to do, be successful. Absolutely. And if you, if you shake enough hands, you'll figure it out. Do it. Yeah, I think, you know, here's the pizza guy again, walking by. I got to, I got to let him by here. Have to let him by. Look at all the trades, Jordan. You see him? Can you see the camera? Oh man, <laughs> how you doing? What's up, buddy? How, how, so, he said, What's so up? Run us through this. 
how did um so obviously you guys sell sandwiches i know that you've uh expanded into different realms since the beginning yep. how did that happen for you how did you come up with that was pizza part of the plan was okay. how i do it jordan is i break the day up in parts okay so break the day up in parts and see where your weak points are so we had a breakfast business then we went to a lunch business so what you got to get that no 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 you're good okay, so you had a breakfast business and you had a lunch business so what what that front time frame from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock is two hours at downtime so what do we do there we do uh box lunches to schools okay so or the box hence the box lunch when we went to the hospital and stuff so the two hour gap now we feel we're doing box lunches for schools so now we go to our lunch hour from 12 o'clock to 2 2 30. so now what do you do from three o'clock to 10 o'clock you close so three o'clock to six or seven we do dinners to go you know so dinners to go every day we put out a blast of what our dinner specials are and from seven o'clock you know roughly dinner time that's when the pizza picks up so every part of the day has something different going on you know so we start with breakfast sandwich in the morning then we go to school box lunch then we go out to our deli lunches then we go to our from three o'clock we start prepping for the next day a little bit for the school lunches because we do a lot of them yeah we do, then we do our dinner crowd and then we do our pizza crowd and then hence it come back in the morning and start again wow i i, I the reason i asked that question is because i never thought about it that way yeah so the and pizza how that came in i used to say to myself so i used to close at six seven o'clock at night so i said from seven o'clock at night to five or six o'clock in the morning that's too many hours i'm not making money you follow so yeah. the store was here i'm paying electric i'm paying i was paying rent at the time you know so how do i you own the store I, now yeah so how do i shorten those hours to make more money so the, the answer was do i make bagels now nah, i already open for breakfast do i this now nah, i already do that ah you know what i don't do nothing from six seven o'clock at night till 10 11 o'clock at night hence the word pizza so if somebody comes in for a sandwich they're waiting they'll grab a slice of pizza so i got the whole market if you want a sandwich and i want pizza your car pulls up. I got bus of both worlds. They're not just going to the pizzeria and you got to set up a pizza too. So if you come to my store, a couple guys, a couple ladies, you can get pizza, you can get a sandwich, you can get whatever you want. Yeah. And it is not just mediocre pizza. It is out of the park pizza. I'm because I've been there when I had a slice of pizza waiting on my sandwich. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. You know, grab, grab the three or $4 sale while you're waiting for your sandwich you know absolutely i love your perspective on all of this and how you're thinking about going through the deli um have you have there been thoughts of maybe uh, another parkwood 2.0 jordan there is no talk there's no talk of 2.0 i love when i'm out of here jordan i'm shot you know and i and honestly <laughs> i love what i do that you know do, will i trust certain people for what i do yeah but you know what jordan i love what i do so much that i'm i'm happy with the story ending when I close my door one day and call it a day, I have many opportunities, a lot of lucrative friends that say, Rod, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. There's only one number one deli guy. And there's only one team that I have that I want to go to bed with. And I don't want to worry about my brother-in-law as a chef. My other brother-in-law is, you know, has, has another food business. And a lot of my good friends are in the business and there's many opportunities, Jordan, but you know what? I'm very, very fortunate to be successful where I am. And I don't want to challenge that jeopardize what i have you follow i just want to stay strong. yeah i want to stay strong get stronger you know prove to my point that i am the, the number one daily guy prove to everybody else every day and you know it's kind of funny that 36 years in and now people are starting to say wow is that that daily guy where do i know you from and i'm like how the heck does he know me social media you know social media yep it's profound it's profound and i asked you about the 2.0 because I know you've been to the Tampa area. I know it needs some help. <laughs> <laughs> they got right Stelly, which is the only good one. They're definitely, you definitely, every time you visit, you know that it needs some help. <laughs> well, my friends at Sigma Chi are all in. They, they definitely want me to, you know, to do a deli there. And, and you know, and as a, you are alumni, as you could, you could, you could sh share that you experienced the deli. You know, my son can, but he's my son. He's a little partial, but you're, you're kind of neutral. So, the, the, the oh, a lot of the, I guess a lot of a lot of them never been there. They no, never been to the actual set. So, so when I first went to visit my son for parents weekend, um, I bought uh, on the plane with me. I bought a bunch of sandwiches for the soon to be Sigma Chi boys, and uh, my son took me to their you know to where they were living, and they were going crazy, you know. So we shared some sandwiches, some T-shirts, had some laughs. 
you know, they wanted me to go out at night with them, but obviously the deli guy goes to bed too early. And then I came back and um, I'm not sure what the president name is or vice president. His name is Mike. I don't know. That's, you know I don't even know his last name, but Mike's like, Oh my God, you know, it's you, blah, blah, blah. So I said, when I get back, I'm going to send you a bunch of sandwiches and you guys go live with it. You know? So I sent back 30 sandwiches to a fat house <laughs> and uh, 30 t-shirts and they were going crazy, 30 chocolate chip cookies. And uh, so, you know, we're just building a relationship with the Sigma guy guys. That's all we're having a lot of fun with. It. I love it. You're basically, you, you got your arm in Tampa. You're halfway there, man. <laughs> I got You know, you, you, you're part of that family too, Jordan. So, you know. I know. I'd support. I'd support. I love it. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. And then what is your view on, like, obviously you're a deli. You told us about the hospitals and what you were doing there. But how do you interact with the community? Um, so, Jordan, um I'm pretty uh, big in the town where I uh, live is Wyckoff. I do a lot uh, with the football program and stuff. I'm the president of the Wyckoff Football Boosters, and I give back to the children as much as I can in that manner. Um, we built a field last year to tuition. It took me five or six years. Uh, we put a million-dollar field together, a turf, oh, wow. um, and I spearheaded that. So we did a lot of fundraising for that. I used to have uh, parties in my yard with live bands raising crazy money, um, but awesome, awesome parties, like stupid parties, five, 600 people from the town of Wyckoff, charge them to come in and just had a great night. We would raise the money that way for the field. Um, here at my deli in uh, December 10th, I shared with this off the record with you, we'll give uh, what's called Toys for Tots across the world. So we'll have in front of my store here, we'll do Toys for Tots where um, we have Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus in front of my store. We give away uh, hamburgers and hot dogs, complimentary, Zeppelis, complimentary, hot chocolate, and you come, you get a picture with Santa, and you give a toy for a boy or a girl out there that doesn't have the opportunity to have a Christmas. And uh, so we give that back. Um, I'm constantly trying to take care of families that, you know, are in need or friends of mine that are struggling. Um, just send dinner, put it by the front door, ring the bell. Don't even put my card on it. Don't want anybody to know. Don't. And I really, I, if they know, that's great. It's from me, but I'm not looking for nothing back. You know, I'm very fortunate that I can give, and I'm happy to do it. You know what I'm saying? happy to do it yeah yeah and that's incredible and that was again december 10th toys yes. for tots December 10th, at next Friday, out in front of the store santa claus arrives on a fire truck at 5 30 and last year we did it the first year with covid because uh, kids couldn't go to see santa claus um so yeah um heather I'm sorry about that, Jordan. No, you're good. Um, you're good. This is part of being in the shop. You're in the yeah, shop. It's, it's, it's real you time. Got you, got, you got everything. You got it authentic. You got pizza coming. You got phones ringing. You got people buying. Going, you know, I told you that's that social media stuff. It's like, what happened? You know? <laughs> but yeah, so next Friday, we're going to crush it. We're going to probably fill. Uh, my goal is this year to fill 18, 18 wheel truck, like one of those big trucks, you know, the big uh, with toys for kids. Um, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a nice night. Is, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll unveil our Christmas T-shirt that night. We'll give T-shirts to all the kids, a Parkwood Deli T-shirt. Uh, I'll save you one. Send me uh, off the record. Send me your address. I'll send you a Christmas one. And next time oh, absolutely. Next, you, next year, you're on air, you can show me some support. Even the Sigma Chi boys don't have that one yet. So you'll be, you can get one up on them. Um, so we'll give away our, you know, we'll, we'll run, uh, give away T-shirts to all the kids. And it's just going to be awesome. I'm, it's next Friday. I'm, it's a week away and I'm jacked up for it. Is there... Um... Is there any way for people to send online donations or a location? Is that established yet or it's all in person? No, I, I, I that's one of my pet peeves too, Jordan. I don't, um, I don't like asking people for that stuff in that manner. Everybody these days go to GoFundMe pages and stuff like that. It's one of my things that um, I believe in life, if you want to do, you could do without, without stuff like that. You know, like I don't like to ask people. Now we'll tell people what we're doing in front of the store. Uh, so come on down, give a toy for a tie. You know, we'll go social media live starting Monday to plug that night. So, so to answer your question online or to donate everything, the answer is kind of no, but we'll start collecting. We are started collecting toys last week. We started and we already got in my basement starting to get full air at the deli with toys that people drop by and Monday we'll start going live and, you know, some of the business in town that support it, I'll go to their business. I'll go live and I'll tell them, Hey, come on out. You know, uh, Oz, Ozfit Jim supports us, you know, so his, his platform gets it. And, you know, when you get the message out there and I think, you know, you're still a young man, but 
I, you know, you see what's out there in our world and people do. If you can really see a kid smile, okay, or you could see a kid smile when he sees Santa Claus. I mean, if you can't get jacked up to something like that in your heart that you can give in the area that we give, and you know where we're from, Jordan, you can give yeah. a little toy, you know, I mean, I don't know what else, whatever satisfaction you can have in life. You know what I mean? There's no other satisfaction that anybody should have if you make somebody else smile, you know? Yeah. And, and the best thing I like, Jordan, is I used to give to this family that I did not, that did not know who was giving to them, that I was the giver. And I told the person, don't ever tell them one person knew. I said, don't ever tell them who it is. Cause I see, I seen that person all the time in my football program. I seen them all the time, but I never wanted that person to know it was me because one, I don't want people to think I'm giving something to somebody for a reason. I'm giving it from the goodness of my heart. And then one day this man walked up to me when he lost his wife, she was sick years later. And he walked up to me, he says, do you know who I am? And I said, no, I don't. And I did not know who he was. And he goes, you sent me chicken franchise every three days. Cause you knew my wife liked it. And you never knew, you never knew it was me. And I said, nope, I never knew it was you. So what my message to that is, if you give in life, don't expect anything back. But if that person doesn't even know it's you, but you know who they are, it's cool. You know, it's real cool. And uh, for me, I'm very fortunate to be where I am. To make somebody else smile or to change a day or make them give them food so they can eat or whatever it may be. Do it, man. Don't be afraid. Do it, you know, do it. So don't go out for that steak dinner one night. Take care of somebody that needs it. And anybody that's out there, try it, try it. This Christmas, I'm going to ask everybody out there this Christmas, instead of you going to have a, a nice steak one week, take that money and think hard all your circular friends, you too, Jordan, all your circular friends, they're right in front of your eyes that need a helping hand. And you, you, you'll you say to yourself, you might not think of it now. Two weeks from now, you might be walking down the street saying, you know what? Wow, I can help do so. And you'll be surprised, Jordan. You'll feel real good in your heart. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. It's a good I, thing. Roger, I completely agree. And that story was pretty profound. I'm not like it, it definitely landed with me. And the you thing know, is powerful, that when you, you go, I mean, it's powerful stuff. You know? Absolutely. And when you go out there with, hey, I'm taking $100 and I'm spending it to get sandwiches so that I can give them away, it's a completely different perspective than, hey, we yeah. went to a nice dinner. And yeah. it's, it's, it comes from a place of service where, that's how you're able to go for the last 36 years. It makes no sense. Yeah. Everyone would be like, you get burned out, tired, whatever it is. No, he's a fully operating machine. Yeah. Because you know, it's a, there's it's nothing a more, more. I think you can hear through the, you know, through the interview, there's nothing more that, uh, that gets me cranked up than to take care of, to take care of somebody else. Well, you know, I had an employee once and I'm definitely not going to share their name, but I knew the mom and dad, the mom and dad, um, we're out of work. All right. And it was Christmas Eve morning. And I'm like, wow, I wonder, um, I wonder what they're doing for dinner, you know? So I come home, I come to the deli and I'm like, you know, mom, whenever we make something, just still make, make stuff on the side, make stuff on the side. And we're going to drop it by this person's house. I think they need it. I just had a gut check, Jordan, just had a gut check. Well, the girl comes back to work three days later. She worked for me. So she was off a couple of days. She was, Oh my God, at my front door, at Christmas Eve, somebody dropped by dinner for me and my family. Thank God we had nothing for the holidays, and it was an amazing Christmas I had with my family. Game over right there. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you're like, wow, all right, I did something good. You know? But you, everybody will have that time one day to, to, to reach down, you know, and, and pull somebody out of a hole and be kind. My wife lives by a, a word, and it's um, Ellen DeGeneres always says it, be kind. And you know what? Whenever you're walking down the street and a guy bumps you, you turn around, you want to say a curse word to him, like, you're kidding me, buddy, you know, watch where you're walking. You know what? Just take a deep breath and say, be kind. So what? The guy bumped me. Be kind, you know? Because what's that going to get you? In a fight, maybe shot these days, an argument that you don't need, your girlfriend's going to be next to you, pulling your hand saying, come on, do we really need to do this? You know, so I'm not saying I don't get annoyed at certain things, but every time I, my blood pressure tries to get up, I try and decompose and say, you know what? Be kind, you know what I mean? And I think uh, if everybody does that in the world we're in today, I think you'll have a different perspective. 
Absolutely. I, I love this. And the fact that you gave the action step of everyone going out and giving something and it could be food, it could be a coat, it could be whatever. Um, we've done. Yeah, I did some stuff last year and I've done, I do it sometimes where it's there's the homeless and obviously with COVID, the homeless were having a big issue. There's a lot of them. So what we did was we went to the food store, we spent 20 bucks, we bought waters, case of water, <laughs> garlic bread, all of this different stuff. $20 at a food store. You can go crazy. Um, and then we went to the Goodwill, went crazy again with another $20. My goodness. Now we're at $40 and we bought jackets and coats and I'm in Tampa. So like we're coming out, giving all this stuff. These people were so grateful. And we showed uh, my girlfriend's younger brother, who's nine. He was like, wow, like this is crazy that someone was so grateful for a water. Yeah. for any of this in like, yeah. we live in such abundance that we we take a lot of this for granted so roger for you to have this perspective especially in north jersey where it is just doggy dog like it is aggressive there um it, it's good to see and yeah. it's definitely making the place better yep yep it's pretty cool it's, it's good you know i always try and tell people you know you know you never know like right now life is good for the, for the deli guy, you know, but you never know one day where it might not be good, you know? So along your path, you know, that ladder, you know, the ladder goes up and it keeps going up as, as good as you think you are. But one day, Jordan, one day, we're all going to come down the other side of that ladder, you know, and hopefully the ladder is very slow moving for some people, but sometimes it happens faster than it does. So just remember, you know, they always use that line. You go up the ladder, it's coming down eventually. So be humble, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So Roger, the deli guy, what is it that you want to leave the audience with? Where can they find you? Who, who are you? What, where can they find Parkwood? Should the they make guy's the trip? Name, the deli guy's name is Roger Snobish. Um, I believe there's nobody better than me. Uh, my deli's in Midland Park, New Jersey. I love coming to the deli every day. I love to meet new people. You know, uh, it, it's funny every time I go to different places, Jordan, and people. I was in Florida, people like, oh my God, there's a deli guy. It just makes me smile, saying, "Wow, you know, uh, it's 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 just cool, you know." So I, I I love to welcome everybody to my store. Whenever you're in Bergen County, just come in, ask for me, Roger. I'd love to come out. You know, I, I definitely give you a T-shirt. We'll smile, we'll laugh, we'll take a picture, <laughs> and uh, if any message we can give anybody out there, you know, we're uh, I think it's December third right now, December fourth. I think it's. Uh, if to take a message this way, work hard. It's out there for you. Be humble. I'm as humble as they come. I still show up to work every day at 4:30, um, and just, just, just be kind. Give it back, and you know, I'd love to see everybody when you're in, you know, Ridgewood, and when you come back, just come back and say hi, and just understand that, that life is is what you make of it. Enjoy it. You know. Yeah, I love that. Life is what you make of it, Roger. This has been amazing. And guys, don't forget, December 10th, Toys for Tots at Parkwood, you can come by, drop off the toys. Um, yeah, make sure you guys get out to that event and thank you. Jordan, it's me, the deli guy. <laughs>